good people, we're alive! Back again. Well look, it's been some fantastic response to my videos, so I've been inspired enough to do a few more. Um, now this one is all about the tricky subject of painting trees. Now we have one particular iconic tree in Northumberland um, known as Sycamore Gap and uh, made famous by um, Hadrian, um, Hadrian Robin Hood, wasn't it? Hadrian Hood, that's right. Um, so anyway, we are going to uh, show you some fantastic techniques that are unusual. We'll actually show you that we can actually paint trees and things without brushes. In fact, painting trees with a brush is incredibly tricky. And so what I suggest is you try painting a tree with a piece of wood. What I'm going to show you here is a very cheap brush, the kind of brush you'd get from a children's painting set. Made of bristle. But on the back here, I've cut a little chisel out of it. Can you see that? Just about 45 degrees like that. The other thing I've got is a hake brush. We've seen this before in my last demo. If you haven't got a hake brush, you could go and grab Grandpa's shaving stick. Um, I've got a mixing brush, cheap little mixing brush or bristle brush again. And I've got a postcard. And I've got a palette knife. If you haven't got a palette knife, you could always swipe your misused credit card. Since none of us are spending anything anymore. Right, so, here we go. Now, we showed you the mixing process before. Now, it's always very important that you pre-mix your colours and you stretch your paper. So, I've got two colours. I've got sepia. And I've got, oh sorry, three colours, correction. I've got a blue, a dark blue, and I've got crimson, and I've got sepia here. And this is why we're going to be just working with what we call a monotone. So I'm going to start off with the process again, as before in the last video. So quickly, clean water, a few drops. Very useful tip, that. So then, using my mixing brush, I'm going to start off with the clean colours here. Make a bit of violet by combining the blue and the red together. And make this quite strong. Can you see how that's sticking onto the palette like that? Yes, so that's good. So clean off the brush. And now into the sepia. Get this very strong. Very like ink, very strong inky consistency. Good. Then I'm going to take some of that out. I'm going to thin that down. So that's about half as thick. Can you see that on the palette? How, how it sort of spreads out faster. Whereas this is slower. Can you see that? Thicker, thinner. And then I'm going to make even thinner. So that is thin down and that is thinner. Thicker. And thick, super thick. Good. Hooray! Now for the painting. Now what I'm going to do is just what a wet on to dry technique for this. So I'm going to use this child's brush and I'm going to go I'm not going to do that. With my child's brush, I'm going to go into the blue mixture. And here we go. So I'm going to paint what is effectively the shadows. So hold the brush quite far out so it relaxes you a little bit more and it forces you to use your arm to paint with. So here I'm going to create like this, a shape a bit like that. Flick up here, like that. 
bit of scraping around here. Jolly good. Now with that done, I'm now going to go into my thinner paint. This is the thick, thinner and really thin. And then go over that loosely. Something like that. Now the thick paint's going to go in. This is very, very thick and I'm going to just tap that in. Now because this brush is a bit spiky, it actually makes quite a good effect. It's not so perfect and I don't want it for my wall. Let's just take that up there. So this is going to be for the wall, believe it or not. Stick this about. Right, so now just wait a few seconds for this. It's important just to let that dry off a little bit, not too dry. Just let it settle. So it just needs a bit of magic putting over it now. And this is where the palette knife can come in. I use this one, it's called a, it's a teardrop shaped palette knife. Now, you haven't got a palette knife, I said before, a plastic greeting, um, credit card or something like that. So, here we go, just using the edge, I'm going to keep these horizontal but step them up. Again. Oh, truly fantastic. <laughs> you see how I've kept all these sort of horizontal and stepped them up like that rather than going with the angle. So, jolly good. So now it's time to let that dry off. Now I would normally let it dry off in its own time because it spoils the effect if you use a hairdryer. But we'll get the old Buffon out, Buffon machine, and give it a quick blast. So that'll do. Okay, now for some skies. Now people keep asking me about skies. Now remember in our Dunstan picture, Dunstan picture, did a sort of very lively, atmospheric, stormy sky. Well, we'll continue with that, I think. So we'll put that onto here. So clean water, and I'm going to make sure, however, before you start, you've made sure you've got enough paint. Now, I made plenty at the beginning. I made plenty of thick, thinner, and very thin, and I've got the cut of blue and the red mixed together as well. So, that's very important. Most people go wrong because they wet the paper first and then they think, ooh, I haven't mixed any colour. And it's a complete cock up. Oh, here we go. Clean water. Doesn't matter if I go over the wall too much. Just fill that in. Make sure it's nicely wetted. So here we go with my child's brush. Into the medium paint. Here we go. Nice stormy sky. Now just be gentle with it using the edge. You see how I'm just almost tickling the surface. Probably do. Now for the thick. See, I, I put that little zigzag in and almost I'm pointing in with my brush, almost imagining like I'm throwing a dart, a dart into it to give it perspective. Take your eye into the centre of interest, which is going to be our tree. So here again, the thick stuff. See, it's so much easier than the paint's pre-mixed. Uh, here it goes down.
do some of it here, might as well. You see how I'm kind of drawing into the subject like that. See, here. Now you see that fantastic effect, how beautiful that is. Now I can take my blotting paper. Now you can use, you could use kitchen towel if you're stuck at home, most of us are. But blotting paper is much better. It really takes out the, the old paint. And we, there we go, I'm gonna tear that and then blot that out in little areas, which instantly dries the paper and sucks out the old paint. Now I'm tempted to paint in the White Cliffs of Dover, but I can assure you they are not there. When you climb over the other side of that hill, the White Cliffs of Dover are not there. Hollywood seems to think they are. But they're not. Now, other thing is, I did mention I've stretched my paper, and I'm using this fantastic Kiba Art Mate paper stretcher. If you haven't got a Kiba Art Mate, bad luck! But you could just stretch it onto some board, pin it down with gum strip, not masking tape. If you haven't got gum strip, then don't stretch your paper. But you will find it difficult. So it's really worth stretching the paper up properly. So you've got this control, otherwise the paper buckles and lumps up and imagine all this paint would then run in and out of all those nooks and crannies. So now I've got to let that dry off. Again, I would let that dry off naturally. Otherwise it will spoil the effect if I use a hairdryer. But I haven't got time, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, now what I've got is my tree. Now this is a skeleton of the tree that I'm going to be painting. Now we're just going to follow a little system that I've developed. And I call it, oh, sorry, yes, this system here. So you've got your first finger, and you've got your second finger. Normally, when I do these demonstrations, the whole of the audience have left the room by this stage. No, but anyway, no, you've got this, it's the angle. You've got your main tree and the branch is coming off. So here we go. So this is where we've got the tip of my brush here. So I'm going to use my mixing brush and go into the thick paint. And I'm going to load the brush the tip of the brush, the handle of the brush, the wooden stick, you could, even, you could actually use a twig, It'd be fantastic for this. And then I'm going to make a little puddle on here. But carefully, I'm going to hold the brush handle like this. And I'm going to go in the direction of the main branch. Here it goes, very lightly. And as it gets thinner, I start to turn. See how I just turn the stick to make it go finer. That's good. We're back in again, just top up. Now, the first branch is like this finger again. It comes out at that angle. So here it goes. And it starts about a third of the way up. Branches, the main branch always starts about a third of the way up the tree. So here we go. Here we go now. Keep it topped up. Plenty of liquid on it. Like so. And now, the next trick is that that branch becomes the first in a way, so the angle comes off. That angle. Okay, so here it goes. So I'm just turning the brush as I paint to make it go thinner. You can always put a bit of water into this and it'll follow like a river down the colour. So 
Now here we go. Now the next one, so about a third of the way up. Start painting a bit faster now. And I repeat that system. Now, the important thing is to get the proportion right. The width is about equivalent to the height of the tree. So you can repeat this technique as you get more practice, the quicker it is. Always working that angle. I'm going to go back to my cheap brush again. Just finish that off there a little bit. And what I can do is take a little bit of blotting paper and just blot that out a bit on that side just so there's a bit of light onto the tree. Now for a fantastic technique. Now here's the postcard. What you want is a piece of card that's slightly shiny, you see, like that, so it's nice and waxy. I'm going to tear that in a slight curve, like that. And now I can come back to my thick paint and paint this off, like that. Now it doesn't stick to the paper very well at all, and you want that, you see. You want it to sort of create little phantoms, shapes like that. So what I can now do is turn that over and I can now print this this is called mono printing just keep going until you get the desired effect sometimes you can do it lightly It's a bit thick there, so I'm just going to water that down and block that off. Water it down and blot it off. Not waiting for it to dry. But always working in a canopy. So like the shape, the tree's coming this way. Finish off now with this thin wash and paint this over. So always think about leading the eye in, no matter where you are, where is the eye taking you to in the painting. So I'm now going to finish by just drying off. I've got one or two more little touches. to the purple mixture. Now what I can now do is paint just at the side here to the left. Have a go, it's great fun. Bye.